Yellow, yellow. Mel yellow. Down. Down. Yes. Good girl. Yes. Thank y'all for tuning back in to your favorite channel, Pelican Bay Dog Talking News. Giving it to you the way I always do, fair and unbiased. Some gonna like it, some ain't. Y'all hit that subscribe button if you haven't subscribed yet. Don't forget to hit that like button before you get up out of here and drop down in them comments like your brothers always do. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to all the Bulldogs from one side of the world to the other side of the world. From one side of the country to the other side of the country. Bulldog in the right way, doing the right things with these dogs. You know what I'm saying? Today, we got a special interview. Um, you know, uh, we're about to talk dogs for a few minutes. You know, um, I got my boy YB up here. You know, uh, yes, I'm going to drop them questions for him, and we're going to talk some bulldogs for y'all brothers and sisters out there today. You know what I'm saying? How, how, how you doing today, brother? Oh, man, I can't complain. Can't complain in the yard, man. Getting it done. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Is it, it was hot. It was hot where you at today. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. But you know they got the uh, the big fight coming up. So when those big fights come up, I I like to try to if my if what I'm doing at the time permits me. But I like to kind of go into a training camp with the fighters and um, work out in the yard. So you know I was out there with, with one of them full dicky sets on the the suit that you zipping up. Yeah. Yeah, so wore that on top of my regular clothes today just to just to do a lot of sweating, you know, and working oh, yeah. with the dog. Oh yeah, who you got on that fight? Oh, uh, I got Terrence Crawford. Oh, I might have I might have to call you up and throw a little side bet or something on. Man, listen. Before I'm, before, before the uh fifth round, because then I ain't gonna be able to get no bets from you. No, no, let me tell you something. Let me tell you one thing about it. Earl Spence is only 41-47. Yeah. He's been inactive. He's at 147 because that's where he, he, you know what I mean? That's that's what you're doing for, a good welterweight. Yeah. Terrence Crawford was 140 and cleared, cleared 140 out, and then he's stepping up to 147. And yeah. at 147, he's only fought the best that he could get in front of him. You know what I mean? If he couldn't fight his best, which was another champion, he would fight a mandator. Yeah. Whoever the sanctioned body told me had to fight. So, yeah, yeah Crop, man, listen. Man, the man comes from just athletics and competitions. His sons is like number one and number two in the country for wrestling. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He ain't, this ain't no... I don't know why they why they keep playing with Crawford like that, but he's an Olympian. You know, he don't work with a lot of those guys, trainers and stuff like that. And I just think that man Earl is Earl is good at fundamental. Earl is like to hey, me. Hold, you, hold on, hold on real quick. Let me see if this right here gonna work real quick. Hold on for a second. Okay. You know what I did that for? Why? Time ticking, boy. Time ticking. If he gonna do it, he ain't got for a couple more weeks. I tell you what, he better be ready, boy. Because the eye, hey. the eye collector, the eye collector coming for him, though. <laughs> the y'all give it, y'all giving him, him y'all giving him that title. You know that, like Kell Brook, his eye is over the ball. 
Triple G damaged it before Earl. So Earl just finishing up what Triple G did. But that's that's neither here nor there. What I'm telling you is he gonna have to come out with something else out of his bag to beat Crawford. Yeah, yeah. That oh. fundamental Duke basketball, you just beat me with fundamentals. It ain't enough when I'm special. I got fundamentals and I'm special. Oh yeah. Oh, and that's yeah. what Crawford oh, is, boy. Yeah, yeah. He, <clears throat> yeah, he's something special. See, Man, Crawford is Floyd Mayweather before before he left Bob Earn. Crawford just left Bob Earn. Bob told both of them, you you're born and you won't be able to sell fights. Same thing Floyd did. Yeah, he he bored. He bored, man. That's the only thing about Crawford. I say he a hell of a fighter. Probably, you know, if he beats Spence, he's the best in the world right now. But he just, ticket-wise, he bored. You know what I'm saying? No. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. They like the Conor, yeah, McGregor, yeah. Conor McGregor style, Floyd Mayweather or somebody like that. You know what I'm saying? Talking trash and all kind of stuff. Yeah, he ain't a big trash talker. He ain't got a big media presence, none of that. Mm-hmm. But yeah, man, let's get on to this dog talk. Dog talk. I got the, my first question I got for you, bro, is when it comes to them Frisco dogs, right? Uh huh. Do you think the forty-five minute reputation that they got is a myth, or you think that's the real deal? Because if you really look at it, when it comes to all lines, I mean, the dogs that the ones that stop, a lot of them ain't going past forty-five minutes. I mean, why the other li why the other lines don't have the forty five minute reputation or saying, oh, they'll stop at forty. All dogs don't make it to our mark. I just think it's, it was more of them out there. So yeah. you take a, a a group of them, and then you look. It's it, it's a uh, it's a bigger number of them out there than it is a lot of other dogs. Yeah. yeah. And then when you put competition into it, it, it even the numbers even lower on both sides so me personally i think the boys who run the frisco dogs got as much to to contribute to that that tall tale of 45 minutes as those who have not had it yeah you know some some is saying look hey that's what you get and i own them yards that's why we trying to smoke you within 45 some saying i had a good one that only went 45 and then you got another group of people that saying Hey man, I stopped them motherfuckers because they can't go past forty five. Yeah, you ever so seen? So it's, it's um, what'd you say, brother? You ever seen any of them go like two hours? No, nah, not that I heard of. I heard of. Now, I mean, I mean, I've I've heard of them doing that, but have yeah. I ever seen that? No. Uh -uh. Yeah. Nope. I actually see. I didn't see more motherfuckers make names off of them. You heard of? You know? Can you name any of the ones specific? Can you think of any of the ones that you heard went that long? No, I, I can't not right off top, but you know how you see a report and you say, God damn, and then you want to see how was this dog bred. Yeah. And yeah, when you look, yeah. he got some gone of blood back in there, and it's like, oh, okay. Mm -hmm. I know I have been in that situation before to where I'm looking, but to um not to be biased, like when I see him, I kind of look the other way because I know I ain't looking for none of that blood. Yeah, yeah. And that don't mean they ain't got good dogs. I just don't, I ain't, I don't want it. Now I had one off of Kuma about about maybe say about a year ago, and uh -huh. I, I got it from a brother, and it was a grown dog. And I'm talking about this joker was built like a brick house, and he was full of energy. He looked good. I'm talking about he looked good. He looked like he was worked already naturally. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. I, I ain't never weighed him. I'm just estimating he was probably in his mid forties at least. You know? uh, -huh. but, um, uh he, he, you know, um, I end up getting rid of him or whatever, but. He looked it pretty good, you know what I'm saying? I can't say how he turned out or anything like that. But um, now I feel like that the exact thing you just said, I feel like that about the crow dogs. Yeah. I feel like they bring they bring their body back to your stuff if you need it to. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and they, they, they look pretty decent too. Yeah, I hear a lot of people talking about the crow. I ain't never had the um no up-to-date garner stuff since back in the days you know what i'm saying that was the last time i had garner stuff but uh the, the the akuma dog i had that recently you know what i'm saying but uh i like i said i got rid of him probably about within three or four weeks because he why well, the main reason i got rid of that, that dog man i'm not gonna lie to you he turned his house over i went outside like 10 damn times that joker kept okay. turning his house over turning this house over pulling the top <laughs> of his house i said man damn that i'm uh for one you ain't even lying. I'm running. Two, your ass gone. 
Yeah, yeah, you be that guy be in trouble, and it ain't even nothing. You well kept. You just keep destroying stuff. Yeah, yeah. He looked good yeah. now, and he. I mean, talk turn this water bucket in. Let let him get hyped up and pumped up. He go to turn this stuff over, and I know I could put the yeah. water bucket in the ground and all that. I'll put a cement water bucket, but you know, I wasn't going through all that. I ain't absolutely. Know. Now I know for one point in time, this is probably about shit seven years ago. Yeah, probably about seven years ago, a, a lot of people was on that dynamite train. Yeah. And then I seen them getting rid of those dynamite dogs. I don't know, whatever. Shit, I told you about the one I had. Mine, I thought mine was directly off dynamite, but he was off dynamite son, Dynamo. And shit, okay. that, that motherfucker probably lasted about mm, about 15 minutes against a good, a good hard biting rear end dog. And uh, shit, I mean, he he didn't even show any really no no potential. He just came out curb biting and stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, the dog came out on him so hard. I mean, I'm not gonna say he was schooled out. Or not. He wasn't all the way schooled out yet either. But you know, um, he didn't show any potential at that time. You know. Mm. And, and shit. You know, I ain't really wasting no time on something. I ain't really big. I ain't really big on. You know what I'm saying? I'll tell you one thing. I listened to that show you had with uh, Brick City. That was a good show, man. Thank you, man. Thank you. That was a good show. And I heard a familiar voice. And I said, you know what? Let me call and see. I said, hey, you just did an interview. He said, yeah, man, a couple days ago. That that brother there has is, is got a lot of knowledge as far as been there. Yeah. 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 I, my little John man, I didn't even, to be honest, I didn't breed him until Brick City told me about the, the line. I had him six, seven years now. You know and what I hate? Brick, we, used to, we used to talk to him, and uh, he told me. he It was it was the knowledge he gave me that made me say, you know what? Yeah, I'll breed him now. Man, I hate I hate the fact that uh, them boys got a little John, and my boys got a little John. And both, oh, yeah. Ain't and, both little, and both little Johns damn good. Throwing off good, great, you know, threw off good dogs. So people still talking about different ones. And then so I back in the days I used to get confused with it sometimes, you know what I'm saying? One day they talking about this or that. You know, it don't really too much bother me or nothing now or nothing. But yeah, I'd be like, damn. And it's like, you know, I know they heard about each other. You know, mm -hmm. and like damn, you know, what I guess it is what it is. You can't stop a, a brother from naming his dog a certain thing and shit. Everybody got their own reasons for naming their dog certain things. Yeah, boy. Yeah, yeah boy. But let me mm -hmm. ask you this. When it comes to inbreeding, do you think inbreeding can cause human aggression? Oh uh, well, inbreeding, you know, they, they got a saying and it's it's so repetitive, I hate saying it. But they say you double up on your good, triple up on your bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? So let's say if it's a gene that you're trying to bring in, and that's why you're doing the inbreeding. Well, you don't just get to say, hey, I want these genes and I want this personality. You say this is my reasoning behind even attempting this breeding. But it's some stuff that ain't uh, available to your eye through the two dogs you breeding that's yeah. going to become uh, announced in the pups. So what I was like, if, if we was talking about my dogs, I wouldn't be surprised if I got a people biter out of an uh, inbreeding, and I didn't see that in the 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 sire or the dam. You know what I mean? Yeah. You gonna have all shoots in there that that's not uh, something that you would you would seek to to have on your yard. Yeah, yeah. That's why no no matter what type of breeding you're doing, it's all about color. You can do a line breeding, an inbreeding, a, a, a outcross, closely related outcross, non relation outcross. You can do any the inbreeding any which way you want to, but I mean if you, if you know you going in there and you don't know what to look for or you just yeah. doing it based off paperwork you don't even know what you what you're doing as far as assessing the dogs you should mm -hmm. assess the dogs man and just call accordingly. Yep, that's why I tell a lot of brothers about that walk them all stuff. A lot of brothers only get it because they heard about it. And then, mm -hmm. they, you know, they're great dogs, but when they get it, you don't know where to go about with it. You don't know which, what's what, and when you look at the pedigrees, you don't know 
what's what and why they did this and why they did that and which way to go with it. All you know is you heard that it go good with anything or you know, you're going to try to make this a good good line and you're going to try to make your cross. You know what I'm saying? To be honest with you, that's why I rather overpay and a, and a lot of people say I'm crazy for this, but I explain a, a personal situation. I spent about $10,000 on two pups, right? Yeah. Uh, one of the pups end up getting sick and passing, right? Uh, off off a, a well-known champion dog. But I stay in touch with the guys that I, I may acquire dogs from. I let them know how the dog's going. I keep them with up-to-date pictures. You know what I mean? I just give them updates on they stuff. Even though I spent money, that don't matter. It's still that man's blood. I it, All I did was pay him to transfer ownership. Yeah. I did nothing with the pedigree. I did nothing with the dog to get here. So um, I rather pay you to transfer the um the ownership of the dog and i may i may not even register the dog because it's now when we get to that point it's on me yeah am i overpaying for a dog that i'm gonna be scared to call no that's why i'm gonna keep in touch with the breeder so the breeder say hey that was a good home that dog went to i see how he keep his dog see what he i want that guy having my dogs so that same breeder where i paid 10 for two pups now all these all these dogs are off chance. Turned turned around and sent me two. Was just like man, if they work out, pay me. If not, don't worry about it. Damn. Still behind this line. So when you do that, you I've I've met better dudes that way or free, either overpaying and or getting them for free. Yeah, yeah. And I I've gotten a good one. Those. And 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 I'm I'm sorry to say it is just my personal experience. Them fifteen hundred dollars, two thousand dollars dogs, man. I, you don't ain't no telling what you're getting. I've oh, been yeah. more disappointed doing that than a little bit. But I've spent some money on these dogs, not all at once, but over time when you add it up, I've spent some money on these dogs to try to get the best. Mm-hmm. I feel you, you know, on that. I've paid the same price for a pup that I've paid for a winner. And both of them come with a guarantee. That's really what I'm buying. Is your what guarantee do you do? You, are you sending me that if I don't come to your yard, can I trust you putting something on the transporter? Everybody yeah. shouldn't have the honor of putting something on the transporter for you. You got to go get it and see it yourself. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Man, yeah about that. Definitely, man. So it's it's you know some questions you can you can give a step and repeat answer. You can give an answer to everybody is 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 adequate with but you know sometimes you got to go in, in in depth so a man ain't offended by your answer he understand how you came to the conclusion that you came to mm-hmm. yeah so All that's right. what that's why i refuse you know what, what would you really say brother oh you go ahead you go ahead uh that's why i was saying that's why i refused to, to go to even consider going back and forth anymore because it may be something in your life as to why you came to that conclusion. Yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? And I can't change your experiences. Mm-hmm. So it ain't no sense in me. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Ain't no oh, yeah. sense in yeah. uh, All right. I'm going to ask you this right here, man. I asked uh, Brother Brick Soldier this. Uh, it, uh-huh. This is what I want to know. If he's not retired, what makes a dog stud worthy? If okay, and re- retired, re- reason why I say that, reason why I say that, uh-huh. is, is it safe to breed to a dog that's still active back in them days? Because I mean, if he, t- well, if you breed to him, he curl out. Well, see, that's that's all on the, on the man. Like, like, okay, like he one scratch away from being a, a box jumper. You know, he might be one yeah, scratch yeah, yeah. away from being a champion as well. But, I get, you know, I get what you're saying. So let take, me ask you this. Yeah. And and this is just to better understand you, I'm gonna definitely answer the question. I ain't even pivoting away from it. Yeah. Let's say a dog got two two notches on him. Yeah. And he go out and, and you say, you know what, that motherfucker good. And he's being ducked. Right? Now he's being ducked. Won't nobody answer the phone for him. Yeah. You go get something off of him because of what he did, because of what you know can be verified, you know about it. Yeah, yeah. And he go out and he lose 
It's third. What you gonna get rid of your dog? Nah, I'm, nah, no, I ain't gonna get rid of my. So that's that's what I think about. So my thing is this: Are you going to jump the gun and say, "Remember, if, if you remember when I came on your show before, I told you anything worth having is worth waiting on." Oh yeah, oh yeah. So so if you if you had that that analogy where you like, man, shit, he can go out there and care. Well, that's all of them. Yeah. Even the one that got got to three or got to five, got to whatever, and then they retired him. Who's to say he they didn't just retire him before he cared? Yeah, yeah. So so your standards gotta be on why you getting the dog. So with me, um, I prefer to wait till he's done and gonna do all he is that he can do. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? If he if he's in somebody else's yard. Now, close friend, my yard, stuff like that. I jump the gun, I I chance it. Cause I know no matter what he do, I know what his offspring gotta do over here. Yeah. Yeah, you know, mm-hmm. yeah. he can make Christmas lights come out. I wouldn't give a damn if, if the offspring ain't ain't shit. Shit, it ain't really so, ain't nothing gonna happen with that. So, I right, back in the days, like say, if you knew a, a camp you was getting a couple dogs from, would mm-hmm. you and you didn't have your, your 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 yard like that, would you check the dogs or would you? Breed the dogs, then check the puppies. I'm gonna, I'm gonna check, check. What I, I'm, I'm one of them people, man. You ain't gonna get what ain't there. So I'm gonna check the, I'm gonna check the dogs. Yeah, yeah. And that's that's that has been proven as as, as the way I move. I'm, gonna, man, I'm checking them dogs because once again, no matter what uh no matter what you want to start with a good dog and then you want to keep those same standards you want to try to make you, you want to try to see the dogs getting better yeah. you know what i mean so um you hear a lot of people saying oh yeah i i got a dog and, and the the mother was cold the daddy was a cur or whatever and they produced this to produce that i wouldn't uh i've already said this before i wouldn't know because i ain't breeding them I don't yeah. want to breed. Yeah, I was gonna there's ask you. Too many that. good dogs. Out, yeah, it's too many good dogs out there <laughs> to breed to the left of a dog. Yeah, I was gonna ask you that earlier. I mean, um, late on in the, uh, the thing, but since you said it now, I'm gonna ask you: Have you ever seen uh, or heard about two cold dogs producing at least a champion? Well, somebody else put that shit up online. Yeah. Have I ever heard that? No. <laughs> Because my, my thing is, what, what yard is this dog in? What yard is somebody having the offspring of them from? Well, you know what? I take that back. They said that, and this is this is a tall tale, but they say that female that Jack got from Hollinsworth and Poncho, they say those was actually two of Mr. Hollinsworth's quitters. They was two of his lesser dogs, and Jack took them dogs and bred them and started a whole line off of them. But but you said, like you said, the key word was they was quitters. They could have been still, you know, still high caliber dogs. This wasn't on his level. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and he gave them to him and somebody else. Uh, one man trash, another man treasure. He going to take right, them, you know, again. and he going to, you know, breed them and ain't no telling what competition he was going into. Right now, would you would would you do that if you see a man saying that stock ain't good enough to be in his yard? Would oh, you no. accept? Uh, oh, okay. not me. Just say <laughs> I ain't gonna lie. Yeah, because you know, I just I I just had a uh, bought a dog coming down off a particular dog, and um, dog wasn't to me wasn't wasn't you know something I would want in my yard. Yeah, and um. Yeah, I was told, shit, even by some close people to me, breed her. For what? Why would I do that? I got her aunt over there that's better than she is. I got first cousins of her. I got distant relatives of her. And I got dogs that ain't related to her, and I don't have these problems. So why would I breed that into? So I think it all is where is the individual at who's accepting the dog or breeding the dog? Where yeah. where are they at and where are they foundation built up at? Yeah, yeah. I'm not going to lie. Some dudes. They have the time and they have the the uh the 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 newness to where they could they could tolerate that. Yeah. Yeah, but when you're talking somebody just done 
built their yard up and these are the dogs that they want to represent as a family of dogs and be tied to it's, it's going to be a lot more things that that individual ain't going to accept yeah yeah, yeah you're right yeah. right yeah. You're right all right all right you run that barracuda stuff so have you seen any skin problems in them that that strain of dogs lately over the last 10 15 years yeah i remember i'm the one that told them about that well nobody really said nothing about that until i put out there what i was calling out of my dogs i remember chico used to say something about it on his videos yeah, but it was more of a – when he did it, to me, it was more of a put-down, and that just yeah. happened to be the dog he was talking about at the time. Yeah. Me, I'm telling you that as, like, those are the dogs I like. Those are the dogs I'm going to continue to run. This is just what you got to get out of them. Okay. You know okay. what I mean? Yeah. So I'm not putting them down. Like, you know, you I've, I've heard him talk bad about so many different ones to where now I have to step back and say, okay. And it's no offense to him. It's an alternative it's just, motive. Yeah, it's just it's what dogs are you talking good about that aren't yours? Yeah, yeah. You see what I'm saying? So once you get put in that bracket, now I'm not, like I said, I'm not saying what he's saying ain't true. I ain't saying he ain't had that experience. But I'm not telling you that to beat the to beat the line down. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Because, I mean, somebody now, can tell him, I ain't never seen two barracuda males get hung up together. <laughs> get stuck together so you know what i mean would you rather have skin problem or you rather have a male that that let somebody mount them and swell up in them and get stuck to them i ain't gonna lie boy <laughs> honest <laughs> truth honest truth now i might rather have the motherfucker hung up in them because i'm just gonna be no i'm, I'm keeping it real now yeah 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 you're good because i don't want to deal with the skin problems you know what i'm saying that shit the dog be straight. The child turn about three months, four months old. They start having r red spots and all that. Kind of. My dog got fucked in the ass. Fuck it. You know what I'm saying? He's a punk. Now, you know what I'm saying? Listen, but let me tell you something. You talk shit because I guarantee you, you <laughs> rather have one that could protect yourself if something come up to him. Oh, yeah. And, and, and give him the right things to treat that skin issue. That, that's what I was about yeah. to say because that skin yeah. issue can be treated. You know what I'm saying? Can be treated. Brothers ain't, not, ain't nothing you can do to change that dog but mine about getting mouth yeah. once it happened the first time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I ain't gonna lie to you, dog. When I was a little boy, when I was a little boy, now that's the last time I seen one mounted. I had a um Doberman picture mixed with uh I, I think it was Rottweilers or something like that. And they was brothers, but they used to mount each other all the time and shit. But they ain't never get stuck. You know? They ain't never get stuck. I already they, say, they, I ain't never seen these dogs, and I ain't never heard you tell this story. I bet you money they ain't never get stuck. Hell no, I ain't, I ain't never seen a dog get stuck till I got in the game and start breeding dogs. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And yeah, they dog, are. Hell no. Man, you right. must have some grease back there. That's a third, <laughs> it's a third, it's a third party involved with that shit. There ain't no two dogs can go in no, in no dry ass like that. Hell no. It's a third party involved with some, grease some shit up back that motherfucker, man. I'm yeah, so to... so I'd rather deal with the skin problems. Man. Yeah, you're right, you're right. You can you can you can handle the skin problems. Yes, sir. It's so you can, you can deal with that. It's Happy so Jack make a bunch of shit that'll get you right for that. But uh because look, them trait that that's a trait, though. That dog will throw some more dogs out and it go 30 minutes hard, 30, 45 minutes hard, all of a sudden it just turn around and start getting fucked. It just, yep. start, it just turn around, don't want to do nothing but get hunched or some shit like that. Because he'll think every dog going to do that. You know, it, it's, it's, it's really yeah. a submissive move. What he yeah. doing, he's submitting to the other dog. You know what I'm saying? So, at so this what you saying, you, you don't want one that will, nah, you don't, don't want to turn and start. He, he turning, trying to give you, trying to get you what's back at. He ain't turning to get away from you. <laughs> he turning to get you. Hey, <laughs> when you call a turn on him, he try to have sex. Hey, that, that should have fucking kill up. That shit will fucking yeah. kill up. He be like, what the hell is dog doing? <laughs> he just turned around like he in full blown heat. Yeah, man. So you can't. <laughs> Damn, it's like I said, it all depends on who's who's talking. Because take for instance, you were speaking on Terrence Crawford. If you ask Terrence Crawford that same question, he wants Chico dog. Mm -hmm. Because he don't know all that you know. Yeah. So it's all based on the experiences and the knowledge of who you ask them. Oh, that qu that answer gonna change a million times. Hey, yeah, 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 yeah. You're right about that. You're right about that. 
Yeah, so, man. So, so um, I mean, like, I don't know if I ever asked you this, man, but what you uh, feed? What you feed? Depends on the time of year. Uh, like okay, so, so this is Netty. One thing I paid attention to was everybody's diet. Yeah. Like, people pay attention to keeps and breedings, shit like that. But what I also pay attention to is how you say you feed your dogs. Yeah. And to me, um, a dog this, and, and I had to come to this experience, I had to develop this over time because I was one of them dudes that thought 100% raw was, was best. And certain months, that, that's, that's still how I feed. I feed 100% raw. Other months, if the dog is active or the dog has um, reached this point to where you feed them, but he he's working past the caloric intake of what you feed them, um, to where, like, if you was to give him more, he would have diarrhea. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Now you're taking your water source where you dehydrate them. So what I try to do is I mix the two. I use a kibble to slow down metabolism and as a filler. But I want a very high protein kibble like the the turquoise bag of um Victor. Yeah. Uh that that works good and and what I'm looking at is how consistent is your turds. And once when I was feeding 100% raw, no bag dog food made their turds look like a raw fed dog like that turquoise bag of victor so once i seen that that was going to be the kibble that i used through through those studies of, of looking at what's coming out of them and how they looking as far as dogs yeah okay now i bring back zanetti back up zanetti said he seen dogs that were fed kibble that look good he seen dogs that were fed raw that look good but the dogs he seen that look best were fed both and so now that's why I've added kibble to my diet. But um, normally my dogs they eat a lot of venison. You you go you hunt you hunt it or uh, uh, you know uh, well talk, if, talk, if, talk if about you like don't raw meat talk about like raw venison right yeah uh -huh. yeah okay cool yeah yeah yep so I you know I mean I went and got a grinder went and got a generator you pull up right there and get get all that stuff grinded and um package it and it's fresher than any store meat you're gonna get because you know some of the stuff i'm cleaning is still warm like the you know the deer has just been hit yeah, you know yeah 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 mm -hmm. so it's it's still warm and um still fresh and one thing i noticed that 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 meat that you hunt and um kill yourself it don't get maggots on it as quick as like a store bought chicken leg, something like that. Yeah. If you don't believe me, just get something somebody hunted and leave it out and leave it out right next to something that's store bought. Store bought stuff go bad quicker. Yeah. And I realized that. And um so it's 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 definitely a, a fresher um and more natural way of them eating. And I like to get it grinded up and all that. Why it's fresh like that, and uh, then freeze it, put the freeze on it. Let me ask you, man. I heard you say something about roadkill, and my partners, my boys, you know what I'm saying? I be rocking with over here. They, they, uh -huh. they, they, they big on this too. You, you, you'll pull over and get a fresh roadkill if you know it's fresh. Let me tell you something. I pull up and get fresh roadkill for my table. So, I, what do you think I do for a dog? Man? <laughs> <laughs> hey, I feel you on that, bro. I feel you. What you talking about, man? Yeah, it ain't, it ain't no. Don't get it twisted. Like we, yeah. we, you know, you done left the dog bowl because you ain't just talking about it. Yeah. <laughs> you know that yeah. meat. Depending on what happened. Hey, I feel you on that, bro. I feel you on yeah. that. Yeah, man. I shit. I don't try to hit nothing wildlife, but man, if I hit anything, it's getting in the car with me. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, I know now. If you hit it now, I'm talking about you ride up. And you, see, like, you ain't really seen the car hit it, but you know it's fresh. You like you'll pull up and check it out to see if it's fresh. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I know a lot of people do Shoot, that. Man, my, I know hey, a few people do that. My boy will tell you, man. I tell him all the time. Damn, I wish we was in pickup truck, or I wish we was in uh, uh, my car. It never really happens when I'm by myself, to be honest. Yeah, I never see nothing. I never see uh 
roadkill like that. But if I see it, yeah, man, I will that see it. You got to be crazy not to. All right. Now, I had this question on my on my list, but it came to my mind real quick. My, my partner, uh -huh. my partner City Boy, said he was walking the other day and he seen a bear. All right. Now, he if you was walking and you seen a bear, what would you do with your dog? If far as you know, if you wanted to, we just go about your business. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna hope that the bear used the dogs barking and all that commotion and go ahead and get out of there because that's normally what bears do. Will you pick your but, dog up and leave and get up out of there if he start coming for <clears throat> Uh, shit. It depends. Like if this bear is charging, it don't look like that dog's bark or that dog's presence. It's holding him off no way, shape, form, or fashion. If I can see uh, uh out, I'm going to pick my dog up and try to get away from this bear. You know, keep my dog. Because the bear ain't. But if that bear come at me, shit, I got to let my dog go. That's what the, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got to protect myself. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> yeah. You know, and I say that because I just see my first bear uh, as far as with my old two eyes probably two weeks ago. Damn. Ran right, right across the house. Hold, hold on, bro. Hold on. Yeah. I'm sorry about that. But he ran straight across the highway. And it was a black bear. And you see them black bears on the video. They don't look so big. Yeah. Man, this, this bear was big. So <laughs> a lot of what people think they would do, I don't, I don't think they would do. Because he got my attention. I was in a, in a truck safe away from me. He was actually running away. <laughs> Man, them bears is not as small as, as videos and stuff make them out to be. Hell no. Hell no. And they can move. Yes, sir. Yes, that's what I was about to say now. I'll probably pick my dog up too, but you know we it's gonna slow us down. We're gonna be slower than half, at least half time slower than what we was. He he uh ain't no getting away. Might, ain't no getting yeah, away when he, he get after dog. us. He get at us, you're going to have to do everything they say that your bloodline known for him, pay his own line and all that. <laughs> <laughs> it's this way you got to prove it. Yeah, save yeah. me. Please save me. Yeah, yeah. Hey, so let me ask you, man, what lines cross best with some of your stock? Believe it or not, um, <clears throat> the, the way that the Cuda dogs is bred that I have, um, I corrected them with dogs that were coming down from dogs that like they might have the same dogs that said my dog's third generation might be in these other dogs second generation or fourth generation so i tried to do like a distant outcross you know whatever you're doing yeah you want to try a distant outcross and i like for it to be a family dog i'm gonna bring a family dog to it but Let's say if it's a, I take my 75, 25 outcross dog to a dog that may be 75 outcross 25 relative. Yeah. And put that with my dog and then take those and bring them back into the yard. Take the performance from that and bring them back into the yard. And believe it or not, it takes longer, but you get a more of a consistent dog. You know, uh, it, it, it helps as, as far as like which way to go. Yeah. Now, yeah. if I if I get two puppies from you, a male and a female, off two different litters, some hot stuff, is it with with the line that you're running? Should I go out or should, can I cross them back in? You'll be able to do either one because I'm a, I'll like if I was letting the dog go, I'm giving you something that's been crossed for you to do just that. I believe that when you get something from a breeder, a breeder should sell your dog based on your intent. So the fact that that's one of your questions. Yeah, I would give you something like you looking at this dog. What is it that you want to add? What is it that you trying to bring is would be more of the question because you can go either which way. Yeah, 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 yeah you'll way. be able to go either which way. So it ain't even, hey, you got to do my dogs like it now. Make sure it's a good one. If it ain't a good one, send it back. I'll send you another one. And I ain't talking about uh, like it's a it's a particular person that um they got a female coming from me right yeah it was it was eight females where it started out 
it was uh, nine females, one passed away out this particular litter. So he wanted a female. So that leaves me with eight of them. And I was letting him know, like, man, ain't none of these dogs leaving. So the fact that you got a female, she might not work out. You got a puppy. She might not work out. When you bring that dog back at, you know, two years old telling me, oh, man, she ain't work. Well, it's, it's, uh, it'll be, uh, what, eight other females here with the same pedigree, same age as what you wanted. Yeah. Do you see another one that you might want? I ain't going to tell you raise this dog up, then come back and get no puppy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I feel you on so, that. Yeah, so. So you, so you pretty much keep most of your stuff. Yeah, I ain't. And eight years, I ain't let nothing out but two puppies. She and one know. went back. Yeah, one went back to the guy that uh, had, had originally made the breeding that I got a dog off of. But, ain't, ain't nothing wrong with that. Ain't nothing wrong with yeah. that. But, but, bro, you know, that to have you like Jocko years down the line. What you mean? Years down the line, like, it to have you like Jocko, what I mean by that, like, we oh. saying, why we saying it ain't a whole bunch of Jocko dogs out because mm -hmm. he, he ain't make a lot of breedings or they probably kept it in-house when they was doing the breedings, they probably kept it in-house or, you know, just the dogs didn't get breed as much. They was great, super, superior dogs. It just, how the how the how the uh business end was hand, handled as far as the uh, breeding wise they ain't do a lot of breeding so it ain't it ain't a lot of pure jocko stuff you'll get the red boy the jeep the everything pretty much you can find in pure form except for the jocko because of the breeding stuff like that and you know it can it's yeah, a great know. thing it's a great thing because you, uh you you got that when you got that sauce nobody else don't got your sauce and you, can, you go ahead go ahead I about to say, and you control who get it. You know what I'm saying? You know, if you ain't letting so many people get it, you kind of doing like a, a um, you find, you you checking everything to make sure this person is going to be the fit person for this dog. You know what I'm saying? And that's good. That's a good thing. You know what I'm saying? That's a good thing. And, and when you do it like that, it makes sure that your dog can get the reputation he's supposed to get. You know what yeah. I'm saying? It, it does do that. You know what I'm saying? As far as um, getting them to the right person because like I said before I sell 10 people dogs and none of them the right person then oh it's everybody saying why ain't no dogs from Pelican Bay winning why ain't no dogs from Pelican Bay winning no shows no nothing because I'm just selling them to people who out there doing all this stuff and then none of that stuff interests them you know what I'm saying I got yeah, find... you, ain't, you, ain't, you at that point you wouldn't be selling them to people you selling them to a dollar yeah 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 see selling them to people Typically, you start to know this person, you yeah. know, yeah. like even what you just said about the Jocko dogs, you said, man, they, they wasn't around, they wasn't pure like that because of this, but they were superior dogs. Yeah. I care more about people uh, saying the dogs are superior, knowing they're superior than I care about getting them in other people's hands. Oh, yeah, I feel you on that, because no matter how many Jocko dogs out there, like you said, I still made that statement, and it's a true statement. We know them were superior, yeah. superior dogs. Yeah, yeah, I can't. Yeah. I care more about that. Yeah, yeah. You know, like yeah. that that video and stuff that I sent you and you seen and stuff. Like, you know, do you see those videos and it's all oh, how much and man, I want this one. I'm ready now. Da 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 da. Mm -hmm. But yeah. I, <clears throat> not to say like I'm better or nothing like that. But half the stuff I don't even reply to you because if I was to be totally honest, it's, it's some people that message me that I know I wouldn't even want owning my dog. Yeah. Yeah. You know, especially if you you somebody just looking to breed dog. No, I don't that that ain't what I'm looking for. Now, you somebody who um who responsibly breeds dogs and responsibly places dogs. I don't care if you get my dog to be bred and you have so many people that are say, Man, why you worry about the next man doing if he coming and paying if you think like that, just don't buy. If you ever see me with dog for sale, don't buy. Yeah. Ain't nothing wrong with you think like that. Just please don't ever own my dogs. Yeah. Yeah. You know, because I don't, uh, this is just a, a topic that we were speaking on. I don't, um, even though you spent whatever you spent, I don't think that, that 
even though you or the dog is in your possession, you own the dog, not the blood, and I don't think you should exploit the next man's hard work. You know, you you want uh, a garner dog. You don't got a garner dog. You wouldn't got another one, and you keep breeding these garner dogs to each other. Now, you think people should come see you at, as opposed to just going to see Tom like you did? Yeah, yeah. Like you ain't crossed the man's stuff. You running his stuff into each other, and that's you. You want to be known as the guy. I actually think that's kind of dishonorable and disrespectful. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I feel you, you on know, that. Mm-hmm. I trust you with my heart. That's why you gotta you, you really gotta sell dogs to people. Because man should know your intent. Look, man, I don't want my dogs liquidated. Make sure it's a good one. Once you make sure that dog is a good one, it's it's yours to do whatever you want to it. Cause you done put in the you've matched the effort. Yeah. I had good dogs. I bred them to each other, had pups. You made sure that one of my pups was a good dog, and then you did what it was. So now you done match me in effort. So what you do with the dog, it ain't about what you expect. Yeah. You know, yeah. I'm joking at the end of the movie, man. I set a pile of money on fire. I feel you, I feel you on that. <laughs> you know what I mean? I feel you but on it's, that. <clears throat> so you gotta, you, you just got as any team that's managed anything, uh, public relation is very, very important. So you gotta, you gotta know who you put in, your, who you trust in your line too. Mhm. Right about that. Right about that. I see so many people, man, with so many different brothers and kennels lines. Like you said, that you know ain't represent the line right. You know what I'm saying? And it just it gives everybody line a bad reputation. Far as like I said about the Frisco dogs. You know what I'm saying? It could be just like you know the hands he putting them in. You know what I'm saying? Not yeah. not not checking who to get in the dogs. You know what I'm saying? And being that you're not checking, yeah, you sold five thousand, but now you got a reputation that they all quit because because you got a bunch of a bunch of people grabbing them, not knowing what to do with them, not knowing this and not knowing that, and they taking them out there running this, running that, and now they come back, you know, word them out, everybody gossiping about this. Oh man, this quit, this quit, that quit. This man over in this state talking about this quit. This man over here talking about you got 5,000 people out here with your dog. I mean, David Tant was the number one breeder. And when he left, it left the Frisco stuff, the Gar- Garner stuff. That was the number one breeder, just, just off default. You know what I'm saying? And then, you know, to have that tag, the number one breeder, don't mean you selling no $50 a year. It means you selling some dogs. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and you putting some dogs out there, good dogs and bad dogs. But if you was putting out, you know, 100 dogs a year, you know, you might have 50 good, 50 bad. But when you spread them out across the country, you know, you just hope the 50 that's good get to get out more than the 50 that's bad. But when you got 5,000, you know what I'm saying? Shit, boy, it's going to be a whole lot of, whole lot of. <laughs> See, you know, like what I always wanted to do, I wanted to have dogs that was good enough to receive merits yeah, uh, that were important enough to leave a legacy behind. But also I wanted dogs that people wanted, but it's almost like you can run your yard like the 40-40 club or you can run it like a, a members only club. Yeah. 40-40, whoever's get dressed, come out and stand in line, getting in until we fill this motherfucker up. And they, they fill it up so much, fire department got to tell them, hey, look, you pushing it, you know what I mean? Yeah. Well, that that members only club, man. You don't even see a line out there. You don't know who in there. You just know they door man know who to let in and who not to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the members only club, man. Oh man, that club been there 30, 40 years. These nightclubs just popping. They fly by night. So it's yeah. it's what do you want in your yard? <laughs> and I believe building a family of dogs up. And knowing what you're doing consistently, mm-hmm. uh, and I don't even mean knowing what you're doing because it's no rocket science to breeding dogs. If you just say, "Hey, breed good dogs, keep good dogs, breed good dogs, keep good dogs," so. But, but that's what I said about. Well, that's what I excuse me. I didn't mean to cut y'all, bro. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's what I was talking about when I asked you just a few minutes ago about the um, cold dogs, right? And, and but but you knowing the kennel camp they come from, you got time in with the kennel camp. 
You know, I ain't talking about myself. I'm just talking about anybody in general. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And if you know them dogs produce great, mm -hmm. what just will happen, you got two cold ones or a cur and a cold one. You know what I'm saying? No, mm -hmm. I don't want to say a, I want to say a cur. I want to say two cold ones. Say for you got two cold ones, but you know it's high percentages coming off them. You know what I'm saying? It's like, you know when you breed them, you're going to get some fire. You know what I'm saying? But it's like, you know both You know what you're doing right now? You know what you're doing right now? You saying, off paper. Hey, no, you saying this. Man, Bobby Brown was a great entertainer, and Whitney Houston was one of the best singers. Yeah. So Bobby Christina, I know she going to do something, and she ain't do nothing. But if uh, yeah, I'm saying that if okay. Bob, if Bob if Bobby Brown daddy was a singer, his great granddaddy was a singer, and Whitney but Houston listen, grandpa, okay. all, that, all them. If all so them you was probably, singing, then yeah. Bobby Christina, I'm a black boom. You know, or no saying you know both of them were singing. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's about like that. So you are you cool? Well, in that sense, you would be cool with. Grabbing something because of performance, but accepting something from down from that that doesn't perform. You got to remember, you only making these dogs important because you're talking about how great they were. Yeah, yeah. So don't lower your standards to where you stuck on how great those ones were to where you and you said you were you know in the camp. You've been rocking with the camp for years. Yeah. You should be able to go to that camp and get a good one. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. Matter of fact, that camp should want you to have a good one for bringing a bad one back. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. You see what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. that's how I think. So I don't, and, and that's probably why I, I like more of a family bred dog. Yeah, I like to see crosses done, but I like to see more of a family bred dog because you're more uh, inclined to run, but run into people that want to stand behind that family. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the, the, what I'm talking might seem far fetched to somebody that's only ran into. Uh, peddlers, puppy mills, and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. They probably like, man, what is he talking about? You know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, like, like the little John boys. I'm pretty sure if you had a bad one, you could go talk to them and they, hey, you know what? All right, look, give me this and take that good one right there. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. But far as, I know, like, far as puppies wise, I'm, I done heard them say they'll take stuff back. You know what I'm saying? Or uh, replace a dog or whatever. But I don't know if you're going to come back and get a grown one. I'm not sure. You know what I'm saying? About that wise, you might get another puppy or something. I'm not sure. As far as, you know, actually saying what they're going to replace it with. But I do know they don't like to, they don't like to give you a grown dog unless it's top quality. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. And that's what it's supposed to be. And I done seen them turn would... money down. I done seen them turn money down for uh, uh, you know, back in the '90s, for dogs that um, they they was on fire, but they didn't they, they didn't have they didn't scratch the first scratch. Mm -hmm. they, they wasn't fully started up yet. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Once, once something grabbed them, they was on fire. You know what I'm saying? And but, do you think it's ironic that those those guys you talking about, grandfather, father, son, even the people have been family? Mm-hmm. You know, those are family, but that's why I say, like, you got to you gotta decide, am I trying to be one of these fly-by-night dudes that's in it for the money, and I'm going to just try to breed some dogs and make some money? With that being said, I think you would be smarter to get into bullies and Yorkies and Corso, all that type of stuff. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because, like, those, those I call them beer dogs. You know, you can, you can brew some beer pretty quick with jailhouse hoops. But when we get to talk about fine wines and you know champagnes and stuff, these uh these dogs, that's what it, to me, that's where the quality comes in at. Yeah. That's yeah. where spending this money makes sense, man. Look at these dogs. They've been doing this, this, this come from this family of dogs, from this man. And I know he likes to stand behind his dogs. Yeah, I'm gonna give him top dollar. Yeah. 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 So I see a lot of guys, man, a lot of times. Yeah, they actually crazy prices for these dogs. The dog is half of what you get, man. You getting marriage, you getting family, you getting time, you getting effort, and you don't want to pay for that. Yep. Yeah. So I hear the complaints. I just think a lot of these guys should go get into bullies. I feel you on that. Like if you look at if you look at uh, 
the guy you had on the other day, a lot of his his uh, like the braggadocious points was from sales. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't. That's that's why I said that's more of their market. I I think those guys that just you gonna get into it, you try to make some money, well, be smart, get yourself some bullets. Yeah, I feel you on that. I feel you on that. Yeah, shit, they making them with the, whatever them. <laughs> Oh, uh, was the fiddle right? They making them little dogs, you know. You can stockpile them. Go get, go get yeah, you a yeah. bunch of them. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes, but I mean, he even called them dogs couch potatoes. He said it himself. Mm hmm. Yeah. Shit, if they, don't, if they don't straighten the pits up, they're going to be couch potatoes in a minute. Yeah. And it's going to, you're going to have. The puppy sellers to thank for. As soon as it, it it's happening right now, if you ask me, because most of the good American stuff is hush hush and you know various reasons. And then you look across the pond, these dog they saying these are they good ones, and they can just have them right on Front Street, you know. Mm -hmm. So you taking a step back to that, and then you um you taking a step back to the fact that. A dude will put color and price together. He'll say, "Man, oh no, nah, man, shit! I paid thirty five hundred for this dog. I ain't no. Nah. Yeah, I paid this for this. Oh, I ain't, uh -uh. I gotta get my money back. I'm gonna breed it. I'm get my money back. And look, I'm gonna breed this. They can show you a puppy they got, and they'll show you the dog they gonna breed that puppy to. Yeah. How do you know that puppy's gonna be worth breeding? And the only thing that would make it worth breeding at that point is what? The paperwork and the money you spent for it. Okay, so let me ask you this: uh, uh, the Django, your dog, right? Uh huh. Who he off of? Uh, he's off of Barrett's Ligon and uh, and uh, Snake Horns Lady Barracuda. Ligon so, come down off Mal Can Stone Man, and Lady Barracuda come down off CML's Tampa one time with her. So if you had to start over right now. And then you can you could get the same exact breeding as the Django was as a puppy. Would you would you hunt them, or would you just breed them? If it because was you, because you, because you know what he is and you know what he's uh -huh. worth. And I'm speaking like not don't don't go back to back in the days time thinking think from the day like oh I, I can get something off that a puppy. Now would you would you? Would you take him out there and, and do something with him, or would you go just breed him just off the strength of what you know now? The only, and, and, uh, and don't risk and don't risk losing him, because if you lose him, you won't be able to get another one. Well, okay. So, is this puppy a male or female? I mean, we can make it a uh, we make him a male. We okay. Can... So, if he's a male, I know it don't cost nothing to collect him. I know it don't cost nothing to store him. I'm gonna go collect him. If he's okay. something good, you know, then I'm gonna, you know, do my thing with him. If he's something good, and I just happen to lose him, I don't lose him. Hey, you fucked me up with that when you was waiting on me to say mail, <laughs> collect, yeah, yeah, collect, yeah. kill him all day, collect, collect, kill the whole damn thing. You yeah, know, you, you so always you, gonna have you, it. You collect them. Yeah, you, you, you. That's what you put me up against. So yeah, yeah, and and then when you said puppy. It allowed me to say, okay, yeah, um, this it's gonna be on me. So, like, let me let me give you an example. They bred Django's parents twice, yeah. right? Yeah. Okay. Man, I seen his sister for sale, but by the time I seen her, she was about four years old, had already uh had a, and uh and because they only bred her to one dog i think they bred it to that one dog two or three times but <clears throat> i seen her so what i did was i called the guy i said man i give you this just to take the post down and i give you the rest when i pull up on you did it and i got his sister yeah. but what i also did was got two of her offspring along with the deal and i seen that you know one of them was so big he was big ass made a dog i just didn't i couldn't i didn't want him so i took him back and then that female she wasn't too much nothing 
you know, she she is a good pup, but she proved to be much of nothing. But I have, you know, I have Django's sister. <laughs> yeah, so that. if it, if it's an older dog, it ain't. But so you don't have many options. Now the thing is, do you make sure she might not be able to for you to you know take her out there and start someone? But do you make sure that she's a good dog? Yeah. And I can tell you, buddy, oh boy, <laughs> she, she definitely a good dog. Yeah. Yeah. So her her being his sister ain't mean nothing. It actually put more of a of a standard on her. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? It, it, she she I, she came with with expectations. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know? Yep. Cause Sambo, we had his we had his little mate sister. She she would go, but she wasn't like him. You know what I'm saying? She was. She wasn't even built like him. She was the same. She was like a a, a brindle red nose, like a um, almost like a blonde brindle, and uh -huh. he had, he didn't have no stripes in him. But you know they was yeah. all saying, they was all saying little, and she was a little more slender built than he was. He was he had a little more bulk in his to him, and and he was taller than she was. But she you know she had some gold, but like you said, the standards. You know we kept her, we kept her the sample standards, and when we took her out, she didn't fit them. You know what I'm saying? She went. Yeah. But she wasn't on that level. She probably would have made some great, great puppies. I ain't gonna lie. And she probably would have been a winner. Now that I look back, if we would have, cause what we did with it, it was you know some school and stuff. It, we didn't even really do nothing really, really with her just because she was Sambo's sister, off the same right. rhythm. We wasn't even just off the strength that she was his sister. We wasn't trying to even really do nothing with her or whatever. But you know, um, sometimes man, it'd it be like like. That's why I said in my video earlier, uh, we get, we had them great dogs, and it, it say the, the Django was one of your greatest ones. All the dogs you have after that, you're going to hold to them standards. Like, they're going to have, oh, yeah. you know, you're going to be like, man, damn, he ain't shit. But then you pass him to somebody else. Like you say, the brother earlier, he take the same two dogs, and they breed them, and they start a hell of a yard with them. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But, but you was holding them to the Django standards. You know what I'm yeah. saying? And it's like, shit, we, it's a gift and a curse. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Because we we'll, we we'll pass up on dogs that you know maybe that maybe can work with, but but because yeah. I'm holding the Sambo standards and you holding the Django standards, we be like, man, that, that shit ain't what I I know what I'm looking for. You know what I'm saying? I know I but know. That's what I'm, why when you when you breed a family of dogs, they should be just as good or be getting better consistently and getting better, like you said. Yep. Yeah. 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 So to hold to where if I, you know what I mean? I really told you how hard I was on mine. I actually hold them to a higher standard now than I do Django. Than I did Django. Because if, if, it, if it's worth what it's worth, it should be getting better. You know? Yep. Yeah. And, you know, I got, man, shoot, I got some. Remember, I was telling you, like, trying to figure out how to work them to the, the where they want to work to and uh, have enough feed on them to keep them, you know what I mean, right to be able to keep doing that type of work. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because, you know, I got something, man, that, man, them dogs work all day. They, you got to protect them from themselves when they come to working. I feel you on that. I feel you on that. Yeah, and, and that's the type of dog I like to have. And, like, you know, it's, it just translates over to work. But to me and them, it's it's me, you know, playing with them. Yeah. Like, yeah. I was, I just had some guys in the yard earlier. And one of the, one of the younger guys asked me, he said, man, what's the difference between you and the dudes that say the same things you saying about your dogs they saying about their dogs? Yeah. I said, when you see them talking about their dogs, they standing up in the chain spots. I get in tune with my dogs. I go in every chain spot and sit down, talk yeah. to them, play with them, let them jump all over me. So what's translated to work to some is you come and you look at my dogs and you look at their body language. If you know anything about canine, they playing. Yeah. Their tails always wagging. They always happy. I don't like that stale look where I know you only working for me. Yeah, yeah. You know, I want you to enjoy what you're doing. Mm hmm. Yep. Yep. So, yeah, man, it's all on it's all on the man. What does now, the man want to send and what does the man require? 
Now, I ain't never asked nobody this, but it just came to my mind because we were talking about uh, mm -hmm. when it comes to pit bulls, do you think it's it's, it's like when it model wise, we got drive levels, low drive, high drive, medium drive. You think with pit bulls, it's the same, you no know, same thing, but we don't we don't necessarily talk about it like that. But you think it's the same thing? Uh, we talk about it like that. It's just the if when you start talking those those standards, you getting into really paying attention to what's yeah. going on. Like take for instance, the ADBA. You take your dog to a show. One of the things he's getting points for is his attitude. Yeah, now, I remember it's a terrier, so yeah. it should have certain certain aspects of a terrier. And if yeah. it doesn't have those, you know, then you got to ask yourself. Would I breed that dog? Is that a dog that I would, you know, because it's all about do you want that dog's genetics to pass on? Mm -hmm. You yep. know, you're giving the dog a good home and making sure the dog is okay. There's nothing wrong with that. You breeding the dog and passing them genetics on, that's when it makes you get an eyebrow raised at you. Yeah. You know? Yeah. yeah. I, ain't, I ain't gonna lie, man. Since, like, I start looking at a lot of these dog channels and even doing mine and watching these other boys' videos and stuff over the past uh -huh. two, over the past two years, man, I pay attention to a whole lot more because with me, I was more of a performance man back in the days. I I, I try to make puppies and I bred, but you know it was no big deal with me. You know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. Freedom wise, as long as I had something to go out and, and kick some ass when it was time to kick ass or whatever. Right. That's all I was with or whatever. But you know, it just. Man, shit. Well, when you look at a lot of those good dogs, where you might see them in a Stratton book, you might see a pedigree of them. Yeah. A lot of them dogs had good confirmation. Yeah, yeah. A lot of them. You know what I mean? And who knows if it was because they was getting more exercise, people had more land back then. Yep. Well, who knows, you know? Um, But what I can say is I had noticed that a lot of the um i think i spoke about this on pro show before or something like that but what i noticed was a lot of the the dudes that's bragging just only on performance yeah they would take their dog like they would show up with a dog you would hear whispers you know that's such and such and they couldn't get ribbons at these shows yeah so um I, I, you know, I know a little bit about horses. I said, man, the dogs I see in Stratton's book, if what they said about them was true, and then they look that good, these could be triple crown dogs, you know, yeah. able to tap out in three different things. Because, you know, as, with, with, with these dogs, if what they say is true, then that's the chat, then uh, confirmation, that's the chat, then you can the weight pull, you can you can chat, you know what I mean, do something else that you chat out and that's a triple crown dog. Yeah. I believe that the American Pitbull Terrier was good enough to do it. So I, I start looking for dogs that I felt could be triple crown dogs. Yeah. And I wanted to have, you know, thorough books, thorough records, and have these triple crown dogs. Oh yeah, I feel you on that. Me and um my, my I had a um well, shout out to the brother um from B More that's doing the book. I hope he's still doing that book, fam. You know what I'm saying? Um, he was talking to me about that same stuff, man. About the um, hold on for a minute. Yeah, he was talking to me about that same stuff, man. About the triple crown stuff and and trying to get these dogs where they're getting three, you know three three of them things you know what i'm saying from three different right. three different places or whatever and you know just trying to do things on that level you know what i'm saying and he was talking about like shuts and you know what i'm saying because you know if you 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 got one that he he doing good in the shuts and then then he um doing say um hba confirmation show you know what i'm saying and then he got you know whatever else he placing good in or whatever but um you know um because and that's another thing that the pit bulls it's starting. I'm starting to see more more pits in it over the past ten years. Is the shuts and the shuts and stuff. You know what I'm saying? They start. You remember? You, do you remember that conversation that guy told you that one of the dogs that had just won shuts and was a pit bull, won nationals. 
So, uh, yeah, I remember somebody saying that. <laughs> mm-hmm. All right, then. So, yeah, man, it's 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 uh it's uh it's it, it can be done. It raises the bar and ownership. And let's just say you got a dog from this man and all that, and you elevate your dog like that. Can that man say anything to you about breeding that dog? No. Yeah. Look at the work I put in. You know yeah. what I mean? But don't be one of them guys that want to just stockpile dogs and then you think you're going to get rich off dogs and you want to. If that's what you're doing, that's on you. I'm not even call. I, I will not call out no peddlers no more. We just all know what we're saying. Yeah. And, what and, I'm saying is don't make me part of your program. Oh, yeah. I feel you on that. I feel you on that. And see, that's why I say sometime about dogs that's not getting dealt with on a daily basis sometimes because see i was never a uh, real i never had like 50 dogs at one time i always right. had a small amount you know what i'm saying that i can focus on at one time and you know when i when i when you when you got a, a small amount of dogs you can focus on them say i'm talking about the um the walk walk stuff okay uh-huh. now if i'm over here with you know just say 10 dogs and I got time to focus on mine. I could I can make you know bring something out of mind that you got a hundred dogs or you just you know you're not really focused on them like that. You just waiting on them to turn. You are gonna check them out when it, when it, whenever you feel like checking them. If he look good, if he don't, you are gonna sit them back. You are gonna bring them back out again, or you are gonna keep checking them like that. But when the, when I got a little bit of dog, I'm, I'm I'm steady dealing with this dog. You know what I'm saying? He can be fearful one day and then next week he be a straight monster. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, when, like think about how many good dogs you've seen that were titled and, and these dogs, this breed of dogs. Yeah. And think about the picture that you see them. They sitting on the couch. They watch the TV. Mm-hmm. They, you see them sitting at the kitchen table. You see them with kids. You see them on the Jenny pulling kids around in circles. You see them, um, you know, doing doing things. That you see, some of them you even see them with a cat. Uh, yeah. I used to have a parrot. You know, and Django be in the room with the parrot. I never really took my eyes off of him, but man, sometimes I would let the parrot perch up on the spring pole. Now I couldn't handle dog on the spring pole at the same time, but that's just how much this parrot was around these good dogs. Cause the parrot was all, uh, on my shoulder a lot. Yeah, I'd be yeah. working dogs, you know, and the parrot wouldn't fly away with my birds. So yeah, you you see it. Mm-hmm. A lot of these dogs. Um, my my motto is if a dog can't be a pet, why do you want to pet that dog? Meaning, if I can't put you on a chain, I can't put you in a kennel, I can't put you above ground pen, kennel, I can't bring you in the house, it ain't nothing in my yard that can't go in the house. Yeah. Nothing. Because they all are, are, are my pets. Yeah. I pets perform better. I don't care what nobody say. Yeah. So you want to talk about performance because a pet is a socialized dog. No matter how you want to present it, you want to say one that's socialized, one that's well-rounded, or you want to call it, the, you know, a pet because a pet get to go in the car, a pet get yep. to come in the house, a pet get to do all this. So it's being socialized. I agree with you with that. I agree yeah. with you with that. So they, you know, they perform better. But we've come to a time in our breed where people are teased about that. Yeah. You tease for having your dog as a pet. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, they are, man, I don't even want to get started. I don't want to get started, man. You know, but yeah, pets perform better. Hey, if you can do it all over again, what would you mm-hmm. do different, if if anything? Um, what would I do different? I wouldn't have offended so many people on the internet just to offend them. Like, I wouldn't have trolled so hard. Yeah. Outside of that, <laughs> um, I wouldn't I wouldn't pay so much attention to a Peds Online account. Yeah. You know, I put enough time in reading stuff on there to where if I would just did that, I'd be a veterinarian by now. So, um, I would spend more time. Th- this is my answer to your question. Yeah. I would spend more time to, to you know what I mean, concisely put it. And those things are why I'm saying this. I would put more time into being, becoming something that betters the breed, betters the dogs that are in my care. Yeah. 
Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Whether it's knowing more about natural herbs for the dogs, it's what is when I had have time to study, I'd rather spend it in the yard studying and stuff like that, rather than, you know, going back and forth with you or whoever. You know what I mean? Oh yeah, oh yeah. And I did that before my yard elevated. Come back online, look in, you know, you're doing this. And the dogs, shit, sometimes you come in the yard, they looking at you like, what the hell you been doing? Mm-hmm. You know, it's work time. It's the time we normally work. So, <clears throat> um, yeah, now what I would exploit is, and what I tell other guys this, I would I would pay more attention to housing, feed, um, and a lot of other things, breeding practices. Um, socializing techniques, I would get that from other breeders. Yeah. If 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 I could tell any new guy coming into the dog, learn your breed enough to get you a good one, and then shut yourself away from your breed as far as the knowledge you take in about the inside of the dog. Yeah. Because this breed has so many misconceptions, it's actually like, wow to what's good for the dog. You, you start paying attention to other breeds, you learn little tips and tricks, you know, because you gotta think it's families that have had other breeds, man, for 70, 80 years. They family is known for these dogs. Yeah. Yeah, so, you know, venture out. You know, I got like my breeding practice, I got from a German Shepherd guy, my housing practice, I got from a sled uh, dog guy. The diet, sled dog guy, critiqued it from Zanetti, housing, um, Tom, Garner, and uh, California Jack for housing. Um, <clears throat> my uh, my topical spray, I got that from a garden channel. I spray the dogs like they do organic fruits. Yeah. And it works for flies, anything. So you know it ain't gonna hurt them. Yeah, um, the way I treat the ground, I got that from a guy that cuts trees down. He goes in and puts this stuff on the ground so he don't gotta worry about ticks being on him when he come back to cut your, your tree down. Like when he come up to put the you know section stuff off and all that. Yeah. He he'll he'll put this uh put this chemical down. That way, by the time you come up on his schedule, it ain't no ticks or none of that in that area where he put that at. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, so I got that from him. You <clears throat> step outside your box, you become better. Oh, yeah, you're right about that. Yeah. Right about that. That's when you see new stuff, new things. You, you, yeah, you start you watching time. farming channels, all that type of stuff. Mm-hmm. You yeah. learn a lot. Um, yeah. The way I clean the stalls, I got that from uh, horse breeders. From where? Like horse breeders. Okay. A lot of the, the everyday regimen stuff like that that I do in the yard, none of it comes from pit bull guys. You know, when I come back to pit bull guys, when I look for like times and endurance and stuff like that. Yeah. And like, I look and see somebody and say 20 minutes on a spring pole. Let's just take a spring pole for instance. I got dogs to do three or four hours on that thing. You know, fresh out the cage any, any day of week. Just yeah. come over the cage, you know, and that's what they like to do. Mm-hmm. It's hard getting them off there before that time. Even with that time, I'm just waiting for you to be fatigued so when you go for a rebite on a spring pole, I can catch you. Yeah. Because they're they still strong enough to where it's hard to use the stick and stuff <laughs> like that. And they still pulling for it, so... I see, like, oh, okay. What this husky guy said, man, this actually worked. Yeah, uh, yeah. You know? Like, I don't know, man. I don't know why. For the life of me, I don't know why. We, I don't see more brothers studying the Iditarod with them Alaskan sled dogs. Uh, Not necessarily diets, but diets. You know what I'm saying? We know they're in the cold and all that, but at the same time, uh, what it takes to keep a dog going that long full throttle you know what i'm saying um it's the thing it's too foreign to them when you say brothers like 
the dog, number one, the dog, they're not going to identify with it when they look at it. It's a long head dog. Yeah. And if you talk to the average brother and they see a husky, man, a lot of them say, man, they're white people, dog. Yeah. So it's no, it's no relation there. And then, yeah. yeah. Um, the, the, the culture ties itself a lot to like the hip hop and the urban thing. What's, what's, what's popping over there, even in these areas. And the favorite time is summertime. Yeah. You know, they love summer. Eat shit. Will Smith, the, the man, you hear that joint come on the radio. It's, it's, it's a good time to go. Mm -hmm. So they ain't worried about what something is done, done in the snow. It's, they can't look at it and see. Yeah. You know what I mean? Wash it out. What connects me to this? It, it's no dot to connect them, right? Mm -hmm. And then a lot of those owners who have huskies, they'll look at these brothers as dog abusers. Yep. And just, and not saying that it's right, not saying either side of right. I'm just speaking on yeah. Oh, oh, they go through Peter the same way we do. Yeah. They, Peter yeah. be messing with them and they be you know, but, having and problems. But if if the brothers knew what you just said, if they knew, man, it's, it's some of these sled dog dudes that's holding their nuts and telling Peter, I dare you come in my yard trying to touch a dog. Yeah, all of them saying that. All yeah. of them saying that. If, yep. if they knew how these guys were sticking together and how they was fighting the fight, uh, to not have this for these people to tell them how they was gonna own their dogs, I guarantee you them same brothers will start to pay attention to them because now you've connected this dot. It's something that they can relate to. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's something. Oh, okay, we got that in common. So if nothing else, I don't care how I feel about your race. I don't care how I feel about your breed. I see you going through with these people what I'm going through. So let me learn from the steps you already took because it looked like a lot of y'all get to keep y'all dog. It's working dogs, but you saying it's inhumane to run a dog. The 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 and, and you know them them guys go through checks and all kind of medical checks at the checkpoints. Man, I be you know I'm I'm hip hop too, dog. You know I'm straight out the hood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but I love my you know I love animal sports. I love um, um greyhound racing. I like that. But the thing about mm -hmm. greyhound racing, greyhound race is only short distance. We can learn. We can get stuff from that. They learn how to do certain things, but can a greyhound go for an hour, two hours? These dogs running from damn three or four, five, seven hundred miles. You know what I'm saying? And it and depends on what it what is what it's bred for. See, it ain't it ain't bred to do all the miles you're talking about now. That's why I wouldn't if, really take the greyhound. I wouldn't really take the greyhound advice. I'll take the I did a ride advice because they more long pushing. You know what I'm saying? But well, let me I, ask I you this. I take both of them. I take both of them probably. Just use them in different ways. No, let me ask you this. Yeah. Have you seen the ones that uh I don't know if they're whippets or if they're greyhounds, right? Yeah. But like in the in the in the deserts over like in Saudi, they be running them next to their trucks. Yeah. Like I forgot what these dogs are. I don't even think that they are. are they might hounds. they might be whippets. They might be whippets or something like a um I know exactly which dogs you're talking about. You see, like them, you see how them, you see how them, you see how them dogs is running, and that's that's a, a good speed for a nice amount of time. That's longer than that little short. What they do, I don't know, like quarter mile, something like that, a greyhound track. Yeah, they might do something Eight like that. Miles, something like that. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah, so it's it's all on what what is the sport say like? Cause take for instance, what let's say uh, Floyd Mayweather. He know that uh, a fight is twelve rounds. Yeah. So I'm not gonna judge him based on he ain't fighting forty rounds. Yeah. He he only training for a twelve round bout. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. You know what I mean? So like that's what I was saying. Like it just depends on what are you bred for and, and and the guy behind you. What is he consistently trying to do? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, because you might say, you like take for instance with Aubrey. You might go get a dog and you say, man, this dog ain't had no good endurance. Man, he ain't had to win. But he comes from a line of weight pullers. Yeah, yeah. They, they not, you know, he, he, he doesn't need that. So yeah, it's, that's why you have to become a, a, accustomed to the line you're getting and the man behind the line, the family of dogs. And what are you expecting from it? Yeah. Do your yeah. expectations meet up with their presentation? Because sometimes you're wrong right there from the start. What you expect from this dog? The breed ain't known for it, and that family of dogs ain't known for it. Yeah, yeah. You know, so that's why I said, man, it's it's good to, to get a family-bred dog. Yeah. But now, 
a greyhound fast, but do you think a greyhound can run on a treadmill for the length of time that a pit bull can? Are you you counting full gait or you counting the trotting? Well, well, all I mean, that, all I mean, that? like um, the whole the whole you no know, the trot and the slow down and get your breath back. I know they're gonna take off and they're gonna they, probably they break the wheel. You, when, yeah, they may can when you say when you add that because like take person. You would be saying, I, I would take you saying that they couldn't, but you're saying it based on a sport where you're seeing where they judge them for their full gait. They judge them for top speed. Yeah. You see yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. So they fully extended. So that ain't what they would normally do. But do I think that a greyhound could be conditioned to recover and keep going? Because you said you're counting trotting and all that type of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Because if you look at some of them pit bull videos, yeah, they come out strong. Keep that camera on them for 20 minutes while you're on that mill. Them jokers get to just walk in, just look, hey, hey, looking yeah. around while they do okay. <laughs> so is we talking what we talking? We talking hard work, we talking trying, we talk because you you're gonna get about three different speeds, maybe yeah, even yeah. four on that mill. Mm-hmm. So yeah. we're if we including everything, yeah. I think I think a K9 can do it. It's just who's gonna put it to that expectation. Yeah, yeah. 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 And it's, that, that's why I say, man, a lot of questions, man, ain't so general, you know, because your <clears throat> 30 minutes on the mill could be when you're talking distance wise, your 30 minutes is my 10 minutes. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Yeah. You're right about that. Yeah. They're, they're, they're getting double the damn. They're getting double the damn thing, boy. Yeah. That pit me that ran a damn quarter mile. He done got a whole mile. If you keep him one at the same time, he done ran a whole mile. Going yeah. on, going on a mile and a half, fast as he's running. You know what I'm saying? Yep. So it's it's all it's all it's all on on on, on how we how we talk and how we judge it. What, yeah, what do right. we, yeah. we expect? Yes. Sir. And that's that's uh, just like that's. I, those are the type of guys that I would I wouldn't mind owning my dogs. Yeah. Because right now a lot of people just think I just don't sell them. No, um, it's not that. It's just that I wanted to go to a home that understand what it's what it's put together for. Yeah. You know, and keep it. Now, me knowing your standards, I'm not asking you to bend your standards or nothing because you have mine. Yeah, I'm actually stand up to your standards that you told me because they had to be good for me to release my dog to you. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So it's not no if with that. It's just stay, stay with the standards that got you my dog, and you know, yeah, yeah, don't exploit it. And that that will, I rather those guys have them dogs. Yeah, I feel and you seek that. to have an understanding of. It. You're gonna get a better owner. Mm-hmm. Right about that. Ain't nothing, management, ain't nothing. management, man, is a big part of reputation yep, when it comes to dogs. Ain't that like the feeling of you knowing you done got your dog to the right person, and they know, you know, um, you getting results back from it. You know what I'm saying? Um, yeah, that's a better feeling than getting a good dog. Yeah, yeah. Placing mm-hmm. a good dog and matching it up with a good person is a much better feeling yep. than getting a good dog because once you got a good one and this is where your status are you're going to repeatedly get good ones but you going and you seeing this dog every three four months they sending you pictures hey man just you know giving you an update this and that because even though that dog is away from me i still want to keep tabs on that dog so Mm -hmm. i know about this breeding i know about the dogs that came out of them so i want somebody that's going to keep in touch you know, I don't want to have to use pays online to know what's going on with none of the dogs I bred. I feel you on that. Yeah, I don't I don't like that. I don't want that. So a lot of times, you know, you build a relationship with anybody you sell puppy to. Mm-hmm. Or allow to get your dog. You might not so you might give it to them. Yep. I feel you on yeah. that. Yeah, man. So it's it can be done. Let me ask you this. What do you think? Do you think where the pit bull is at today in America? Do you think it's it's at a like an endangered standpoint? Uh, I think it I think it could be, and I think we underestimated the fact that it could be. I think we all think that all oh, pit is gonna be around the corner 
next day. And we, we breed a lot of them. But I think the way things are going, just imagine how it was 10 years, or let's say 15 years ago. Okay, it was nothing like it was it is right now today. Okay, now now add 15 more years on the day. It might not be nothing like it is today. Can you imagine getting worse than what it is now? Anything worse, no, no. anything worse than what it is now, it's gonna like oh, shit. We're gonna be running and hiding with these motherfuckers. You know what I'm saying? Now, yeah, now let me ask you this. What do you think could and should be done to fix that? To to curve that. Uh Truthfully, man, I think, you know, you can't stop nobody from doing nothing. But I think even when I was young, I used to always hear about this type of stuff. People fighting dogs in the middle of the street. People doing that type of stuff. Backyard. Like, that's the real, the real meaning of backyard. When you got people on the street corners letting dogs fight. Like, they, they're giving the dog a bad reputation. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and uh... You know, it just, I think, man, we got to, it's kind of hard, man, because of the fact that we done let the dope game get into the dogs and stuff. It's kind of hard to even to say what can be changed because you got to, you got so many things that they you know. Because if you ask me, I say, boom, uh, take the dope game back out the dogs. You know what I'm saying? Rewind everything. <laughs> Go back and take the dope game out. And then everybody get their dogs back and just say, if you doing whatever you're doing, you just don't have no pit bulls. You didn't, you never got in the pit bull game or whatever. And, and, and it'd be kind of different, man, because you know, and, and I and I and I've been in the game half my damn life, so I ain't saying nothing. I'm not, no, I ain't knocking what nobody do, but it'd be a little different, man, because that's the the main reason that it they mess with a lot of brothers. You know what I'm saying? And and if two. That's where a lot of killings, that's where a lot of uh, a lot of these high bets and all that stuff is coming from because brothers got extra money to do this with. If brothers was just, just straight, whatever you were, your little uh your legal little thing you had going on, and you ain't want to put no fifty thousand dollars on no dog. You know what I'm saying? You ain't trying to lose fifty thousand dollars you just made off selling houses or doing this or doing that or whatever you're doing, you don't mind do losing fifty thousand of some some you know that other kind, you know, but when when that thing came in, man, it brought more law enforcement into the game. You know what I'm saying? Different kind of law enforcement. Like I was saying in my video earlier, man, brothers getting knocked off back in the days, fighting dogs and all kind of shit. They get tickets. They got locked up. They took their dogs. But they didn't even come back no more. Brothers got more dogs. They didn't care about banning them from having dogs. It wasn't none of that shit. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't nothing. I'm talking about, I ain't even, back in the days with Brother Garcia and them boys, I'm talking about, in my little nineties and you know, little early nineties and stuff like that, you know what I'm saying? It wasn't nothing like that, like it is now, man. Now it's like we love this breed. We love to see the 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 the, the, the Titan traits in these dogs. You know what I'm saying? The barbaric traits in these dogs. But when we really ask ourselves, you know what I'm saying? Is it worth it? You know, truthfully, some brothers say it's worth it if you can get get away with it. You know what I'm saying? But man, the way the way our country built these days, man, you got you got I right, me and you talking right now. Okay, me and you talking on the live. Okay, now shit. If we both got competition problems, man, shit, I'll hit you on the back street. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and this me and you know about this. You know, and if I come holler at you, and then we talking about back in the days now. If I came holler at you, it was already established that I wasn't bringing no more than one or two people with me. You know what I'm saying? Maybe two or something like that. You know, if I bought three, it still wasn't no problem because you weren't going to have no damn boatload of people. Now we got just a small bit of people, man. It's a whole different thing now because it's like being that it is in the hip hop community, the black community and all that other stuff. It's like you have more than just dog men with these dogs. You have everybody with these dogs. You know what I'm saying? Everybody want to be a top shot of dog man. You know what I'm saying? And everybody well, you gotta think hip hop is the most consumed. Hip hop is the most consumed genre of music, and this oh, yeah. dog is tied to hip hop. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. And I always say, I always say, uh, this dog tied to hip hop. You can't never say hip hop and this dog don't belong together because of the fact, just the fact that this <laughs> this this dog is America's most popular dog from way in the past time. You know what I'm saying? Up until now, 
and you know how hip hop is in America. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you gotta look at it. More people that are ex- ex- exploited and, and you know are marketed more of them dressed like a rapper than anything. Yep. Yeah. So the same way it 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 uh, hip hop dominates the music world, dominates fashion. Man, listen. Yeah, listen. it's gonna dominate this. Listen, here, man. I'm 44. Back when Snoop Dogg dropped that damn um that doggy style album. Man, I was, yeah. young, I was young as hell. I could barely even buy the album. You know what I'm saying? Probably about 14, somewhere around that area. You know, but shit, Snoop had the dogs on the video. You know I what think, I'm saying? I was ready to say you go back before that. Think too short. Think Ice Cube. Yeah, they would be yeah. walking past somebody yard where a dog would run up. See the Rockwiler had it, and then boom, yeah. the pit bull came in, mm-hmm. and then DMX amplified it. Yep. And the Dmx it, took it to a, a, a way where it it never they they never gonna dismantle the two. Man, if you don't say hip dogs and hip hop, and you know it, some some brothers might not understand it, so you have to explain it certain ways. You know what I'm saying? And to help brothers understand because it's not wrong for a brother not understand it. It's wrong for you not to explain it to a brother if he don't understand it. You know what I'm saying? And when, D, when Dmx got in the game with that shit, dog Dmx. Everybody know what the, the the game dog is. You know what I'm saying? Everybody know DMX ain't had no bullies. No disrespect to my bully people. Everybody know X was rocking real pit bulls. You know what I'm saying? And he was talking real pit bull raps. It's, it, it takes but real- see, it's, you know, you know, you know what was was more than that. The dogs that he typically was talking about in his music was a lot of strays he would find, yeah. or dogs he knew nothing about. And there's more people out there with these dogs that can relate to that. And because that's an overshadowing thing, look at how you have dudes that like right on social media that tell you to hell with some paper, man. Them dogs ain't worth nothing. Hey, I'm gonna tell you and, this right now. Oh, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. And and so it's it's more it's it's more relatable, you know. Yeah. Um, I think one thing that can really curb this man is going to those dog shows. Yeah, yeah. Because you go to those dog shows, right? Let me ask you this. You say, um, like with the with the whole uh illegal thing of, of, of having these dogs. Yeah. I don't busy myself with it and I don't I don't get bothered with it because we're in a time when man, look at how many murders any other crime you see being done right on camera. Yeah. Yeah, and and we're in a time where it's like people are amplified by this. So I'm I I wouldn't touch on that because if they doing that, why wouldn't they do that? You know? But what I will say, man, is like let's say let's say to, to touch on what you were speaking on, somebody breaking the law with them and they doing this and they doing this preparation and they might be getting two thousand or whatever, whatever the wage is. Yeah. Now you go to an ADBA show and you see the dogs. Who's to say those men ain't wagering on this treadmill race or this weight pool race? Oh yeah, oh, four yeah. times the amount of what you doing that for. A bet is a bet. Bingo. And if if you if they're exposed to more competition mm-hmm. comes with it because you looking, let's just say you you do have a dog that you're putting through a regiment or whatever. You would look. Oh man, that dog over there doing that. I know I can go over there and get a medal because my dog could do that on the treadmill easy yeah. and in less of time. So yeah. now, you know what I mean? You say, Oh yeah, man, that shit. Yeah, what? How much money? You want that? All right, okay. Now, are you supposed to do it? Probably not. Who knows? But yeah. you still are bringing in currency. Like, I always wanted to just have the dogs and um, be able to make things outside the dogs, like health products and equipment stuff like that to where i didn't have to get funds just off my breed of dogs anybody that had dogs could profit from knowing me because yeah. i i would you know I me mean, tap into the market of canine ownership yeah. And, and, yeah. and get money that way you get way more money doing that than you do puppy sales yeah you know you come out with a product that's worth something you put the right marketing behind it and get it on the show or get a collar that and put the right marketing behind it and, and hit the ground, man. You gonna make more money in that than you is puppy, sir. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, so 
I always seen like, yeah, it's it's money in them, but I wanted the money to come from everything outside the dog, so that I didn't have to go and say, "Damn, y'all, I need the money," but I don't want to sell my dog. You know what? Nah, hey, run a sale for them collars. Mm-hmm. You know. I- I try. I was talking to one of my brothers, man, down here, and we, uh, about um starting a, a a competition where it's a two man, a, like your it's your dog and you, y'all two man team. Well, y- y'all got to go in and, and, and catch the hog and, and tie the hog legs up or whatever, and whoever do it the fastest, you know what I'm saying, and, and go by that, you know, first, second, third place or whatever. The hog ain't gonna be the biggest hog ever, you no, know, because you ain't got no bay dogs or nothing with you, but. You know, I was already told that brothers was doing stuff like that back in the days, and they done outlaw that already. Say you can't, um, you can't catch hogs from one spot and take them to another spot like that. You know what I'm saying? Now, if they just grow up in your woods, yeah, you can catch hogs like that, but you can't take them from one area and go use them for something like that to another area. You know that, and they outlaw okay, so it. What, you would be, what you would do in an instant like that. I would, uh, you you know, people have the hog problem. So yeah, these yeah. people got the acreage and you want to hold the event where you bring other guys with dogs in. And what y'all doing is y'all business, but y'all paying them to be able to come on their private land and go catch a hog, set the pin up. Yeah. You know what I mean? And y'all do it right there. Then y'all go to the next state. Y'all go to the next state. People with this land will let you have these events there. Yeah, and it's, I hey, we're on private park, and we ain't trying to relocate no home. Yeah, only the thing hog about we that. We're going to take it. We're going to take it out. Yeah, only thing about that, the kind of different from what I'm talking about, the way you're talking about, you're going to be able to do it. You'll be able to do it like that. Because yeah. the, only, the only problem you're going to have is because you're going to have a whole big ass area. The way I'm talking about, I'm talking about trapping the hog in the area, maybe it's talking about the size of a football field. In a little wooded area, and everybody, you know, you got a little starting point when you go inside the gate or whatever, and you got a time limit. And everybody, whoever get the fastest times to get that hog down, strapped up or whatever, you know, it come back like that. But I'm talking about having it in a football field size area. But you know, they they saying basically you can't gate them in, but they could. You could do it like how you talking about. But when you do it like that, you know, you know, tell how far you gonna run, boy. You might run five now. Depends on how far their property is, I guess. You know. No, I'm saying use their property just to trap it. And yeah, then you yeah, put it yeah. in whatever you want to put it in for your sport. But that hog was caught right there. It'll be eradicated right there, and you're on private property. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're just making an event, you know? Yeah. And you, what, what are they going to say? Because you're taking the hog out the population. It's, it's becoming a problem. So we, we're going to kill the hog, and we're going to run. Uh, um, see, sometimes, man, it's the fight back. It's a name it's a, they call it. It's a name they call it. I can't think of the name. It's what, a name. Baiting? That, no, it ain't baiting. It's something about the whole. It's some kind of name they call it. I can't think of the name they call it. I think well, of it. I, I, I'm that. not. I'm not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not. I'm definitely not saying that that you're not right. And, and you definitely may know way more about it than me being in a, a place that has a whole problem. But what I will say is this: sometimes, man, the 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 law changes how you can do things, not if you can do them. Yeah. You yeah, know what I mean? Because the hogs are still a problem. So yeah. somewhere it's some middle ground to where yeah, yeah. you can have them to where they like, hey, yeah, that's actually cool. They can do it that way. And you getting your event done. It's just, are you going to spend your time and, and look for the loophole and look for whatever it is? Mm-hmm. A lot of times it can be done. You yeah. Know? Yeah, because you got to think, man. They got you can't do that, but you telling me that they can have helicopter rides where they give you an AR-15 and you can shoot them out of the the helicopter. Yeah, they got that that event and you can book that, but we can't do that. That don't even make sense. It's money involved. Well, if you make it an event and you let me tell you something, what do you think will happen if? The, the locals, wherever you may be having this event, you and that homeowner and that landowner make a donation. Now, if you start, you know, you're talking like that, yeah, you're going to have, yeah. yeah. Yeah, guess what? People 
where where you have where the the income is not much and you start to have this event this event getting bigger and bigger man mm-hmm. pete, just like take for instance amazon say we want to open up another warehouse you had states bidding hey can you bring that warehouse here yeah you know what i mean mm-hmm. you got fairgrounds you got all type of stuff man yeah that's why i said brothers need to start joining these clubs their local clubs for their state you know what I mean? Go to these shows, man, because it's a lot of those brothers that have already came up with it and, and know what to do, know just what laws to tell you about. That's actually a position in the clubs is to keep you abreast to laws that may affect you and stuff like that. And they always giving out bulletins, all type of stuff. So um, I encourage brothers to get into them. I know a lot of brothers frown that frown on them, frown on these these. I don't know why, but these these are the these are the clubs that you need to start joining. Mhm. You're right about that, and, and and really, man, I believe once bro, once brothers start going to these shows and stuff, I believe they'll see it ain't what they thought it was and start enjoying that thing, man, and and, and see a different side of the game. You know what I'm saying? Cause like when I was young, you know, like I said, uh, I was like hell with a show, you know what I'm saying. But di- you know, we in different times now. You but know, what I'm you know how many you know how many brothers that will tell you to hell with a show, and them same brothers got a Mayday or a Macho Buck dog, and then you can pull up pictures of Mayday and Macho Buck at a show. Mm-hmm. You see yep. what I'm saying? Yeah. So like it's like okay. You know what I mean? Half the people that they going and reading their books, I can look and see them at those shows. So now you're telling me you look down on those shows? That don't make sense to hey, me. So, hey, and you would consider a triple crown dog a special dog, right? Yeah. Uh-huh. All right. Now, I mean, if that's, you know, that's a special dog, triple crown. So why not, you know, just by him winning two departments, he can win in the in the in the whole world and he can win in the confirmation world he ain't even in triple crown you know what i'm saying but you know like you just said folk are knocking you because you're in the shows or thinking oh i can't get in the shows and this and that when shit man the, 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 some of the best dogs you know they, they got bloodlines on in the yard was in these same shows yeah yeah, I'm telling you, and, and like, don't don't get it twisted. Like I'm saying, a, a triple crown is the only way to go. You oh, got no, some no. studs that may have won the Belmont, hurt his leg, or yeah. he may have won the Derby and got sick, couldn't go to Pimlico. Yeah. It, you, you know what I mean? So it, having a double crown or just having a crown at all, you think somebody would say, oh, this thoroughbred horse is no good because he only won in the Kentucky Derby? Or oh, this thoroughbred horse is no good because he only won at Pimlico. No, they not. Nah. It's not going to be done like that. So, but you have to. I think everybody up in their standards. You know, not to say that people's standards are not good right now. What, what I'm just saying, if you look at yourself and challenge yourself, yeah, to be to to bring forth better dogs, you gonna you gonna have to start looking at other ways so that you ain't getting bored. Yeah, you know, and it 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 helped you be around people who own the same breed as you do, and they are, uh, you know, because I ain't never heard them have no problem about a treadmill race at at these shows. No, but I I do hear other people complain. Oh, you can't have a treadmill, man. They they will lock you up for that. No, it's like so. Hey, that's you know what, what I mean? That's what brothers got to understand, man. You can have these things. And shit, you can't be scared to have them. It's just what, what you're doing yourself that makes you paranoid. You know what I'm saying? What All the stuff you're doing in your life that makes you paranoid and make you think you can't have them. Man, I like, like take for instance, I had I got the slap mail in the yard because I'm redoing the belt, sanding all of the um slats down, any ridges or anything that may have got in them over time. And I'm replacing it with... uh putting a putting a, a top on each slat so that you know it's less pad injuries while on the slat mail, right? I'll be damned if I'm gonna be in trouble because I showed that I got a, a nail. Man, listen. You know what I mean? 
what I'm saying anything in my house or something. Nah. Man, let's hear. Some brothers might be mad I'm about to say this. You know what I'm saying? But a lot of brothers might don't know it. You can get a slap meal from Walmart. Go on Walmart on website and hit type in slap meal for slap meals up there. And a real slap meal gonna come up there. And guess what, my brothers? Boy, <laughs> it ain't nowhere near the prices these brothers charging. I'm talking about real slap meal. I ain't talking about no bullshit. I'm talking about real slap meal. Ain't the prices these brothers charging. And guess what, brother? You know Walmart. You ain't got to worry about delivery. You just pay for it. You just, you just pay for it. That, that son of a gun going to show up. And I'm talking about real deal slap meal. I ain't talking about no bullshit. You know, uh, it might not have the plastic slaps, but they got a real deal. You no know, regular slap meal, man. You know what I'm saying? Mm. And a lot of brothers don't even know you can go on Walmart and get them. You know what I'm saying? Good prices. I'm talking about good prices. You know what I'm saying? And shit, Amazon, you know what I'm saying? They got them, man. They got them. They want to sell them at these places if they was illegal. You know what I'm saying? They don't sell no gun parts. I mean, they sell gun parts, but they don't sell you the trigger. Yeah. The part that, it, that it actually make that hit that bullet, they don't sell that part on, on. You can buy everything else, but you can't buy that dang on part that make that bullet fire. Man, they, so you gotta, you gotta just, man, I, I'm like, I've only had to deal with with animal control twice. Yeah, and and you know, shot records, everything up to date, proof of vet visits and stuff like that. Yeah, I had no problem. Yeah, didn't even have no coming back and all that type. Of, didn't have none of that. Yeah, that's how it is. Where I'm from, man. Animal control really wasn't no problem. You know what I'm saying? Only problem I ever had is when you no, know, I start having my situation. You know what I'm saying? But far as that, they and even up to this day, they still ain't no, they no, I'm talking about the city animal control. The one I made the video about, that's the county. You know what I'm saying? They yeah. crooked. The animal control, Ori County animal control crooked. You know what I'm saying? But I'm talking about the city or whatever. But uh yeah, man, they cool in the city, man. They know they do what they supposed to do and they do their job the way they're supposed to do it. And they give you if you got a problem, they say, yo, you get this straight, we come back, you ain't straight, you know, we're gonna handle it like this. You know that's how they do in the city, but the county. That's, folks, that's actually that's actually what they supposed to do. Like yeah. if what you if if it's a problem, it's not an immediate threat to your dog. They actually not supposed to move. They supposed to give you thirty days to get whatever it is in line. Yep. yep. And if it's not too severe, sometimes they'll do two weeks. But if it's not too severe on the dog, like uh, I hear of them taking a lot of people's dogs for a water bowl being turned over. I've heard of this in different places. Well, rather than taking your dog, especially if you got your shot records and your license is up to par, they're not supposed to remove their dog. They're supposed to give you time frame to, to figure something out so that that don't happen. Yep. Yep. Yeah, right so, about that. You know, you, it, it's, it's making yourself abreast of these these laws mm -hmm. you know what i mean because the, the laws don't only govern you they govern them also yep you know and you know stopping them saying hey hold you gotta take my dog listen what is that you saying is the problem okay hold on all right let me write this down so when you come back you know sometimes you gotta guide them on what's gonna go down yep you right about you know, that. But you, 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 it's so many brothers. If they be honest right now, what they do, they see these people, they panic, and they just allow them to start taking the shit. Mm -hmm. You know, when, when that, when, when, when they showed up in my yard, they get ready to come to the gate. I stopped and put my, put my arm up to his chest. I said, "Hold, oh, hold on. What are you doing? Oh, I'm coming to do a welfare check. I got a call. I said, okay. I ain't got no problem with that. Well, what you know about the breed of dogs I had? Couldn't really tell me nothing. I said, all right, call back and get me somebody specialized in terriers at least. Yeah. The one that came out to specialize in terriers, like, man, very laid back, assess things, say, oh, yeah, okay, now, nah, all right. Yeah, man, hey, good. And they left. Now, had I let that first one come in, it might have been something where he said, oh, no, nah, they got it. Uh-uh, look at this. Because it's at the discretion of the officer that you allow in your in your yard, also. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's at the officer's discretion what type of paperwork they write up. 
Yeah. And just like other officers, man, they don't always mean they right. But you giving them leeway, mm -hmm. they gonna do. Yep. Right about that. Yeah, That's man. Yep. Hey, man, I ain't gonna hold you here too long, man, tonight, man. But I, I do want to ask you this, though. Um, uh -huh. You know, you, you got anything you want to leave the, the chat with? Because, you know, uh, I'm going to, you know, have a chat down there. And I want to say this while I'm talking about the chat, because I got to send a shout out to all the brothers who, you know, be rocking with me in the chat that I, I probably going to see when, I'm, when I post this video. My boy, Liquid Lucky, I always got to shoot your shots out, fam. You know what I'm saying? Um, Fat Farm Ray, uh, City Boy Kennels. Um, High Key Lee, Six One Four Tree, um, Paris Brown, um, um, D Rose, Street Rossi, uh, uh, Dreadlock. Um, let me see, man. Let me see. I hate doing it like this, fam, because I, I be forgetting my brothers, and then I go to looking at this, I be like, oh man, uh, uh, Nick Bronson, brothers be in the chats and stuff, and I and I be like, I be the forgot that name, man. That shit make me feel bad, you know. Um, and when I be shoot, shooting my shots out and stuff, man. But shout out to all my brothers that's down in the chat right now. You know what I'm saying? That's that's uh, you know, keeping these bulldogs doing the right things with these dogs. You know what I'm saying? You say you ain't got nothing else to leave this, to leave them boys with, man. Nah, um, shoot, nah, man. Just, 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 just take heed to anything, anything you could, you could take, and you know what I mean. Prosper from it, pick it up. Everything else, leave it, leave it be. But you know. Uh, doing it that way man you you you're gonna win more than you lose it yes, take sir. it just take a long take a longer time but it's worth it in the end yes sir yes Believe sir me. yes sir y'all heard that man y'all heard that so what i need for y'all to do is stay safe stay legal out there from the north to the south to the east to the west keep bulldogging the way you're always bulldog doing it the right way showing up at these shows showing up at these weight pools uh, getting that legal money with these dogs and, and just staying safe, man. Y'all have a good day, a good night, and PBK9s, we out. <laughs>